going to start constructing the sliding door cupboards for above the passenger and driver's seat. So basically what I've decided to do is use this 45 by 20 mil dress smooth plain timber like I've used to construct part of the bed frame and basically it's just clamped down on the edge of the workbench here and I've got the router with a three quarter eighth inch router bit in which equates to 10 millimeters I am going to be using nine millimeter ply for the door so got the guard set up so the groove is cut five millimeters from the edge here and then I'll leave a couple of millimeters gap and I'll route a one all the way along in behind it as well so just got the depth set to around about five millimeters as well so when the router plunges down the, the guide will stop it against the side of the button and the three quarter eighth inch router bit will plunge five millimeters down into here and then I'll just run it all the way across Right guys, so that's the first slot cut. I'm gonna cut the first slot on all of the buttons that I need first, and then I'm going to adjust the width guide. So we've got all of these the same distance from the edge of the button, and then the second slot is also the same distance from the edge of the button. And then when we fix the frame together, all the way around then hopefully they should match up and we'll get a nice clean slide with the doors in here hey right, guys so we've got the front slot Literally you can see how femma the middle slot is so we're gonna have to be careful with this but once the doors are in that'll be fine that's basically just a guide rail so got the two 10 millimeter slots here nine millimeter ply doors will be going there because this is so thin in the middle it'll mean that the doors sit quite close together so the reason the first one is so close to the front is because these are going to be sitting behind the kitchen cabinets that I'm going to build in front of them so I wanted to make it look as if the backs of the cabinets have actually got some form of board there so these doors will act as the backboard. guys so we've got our four track pieces here these long ones are obviously the top and the bottom and these are the side ones I'm just going to butt these and then where there's actually some timber once the these are sprayed up and the doors are in I will uh, pin them together with 50 millimeter brad so basically what I'm going to do now is find out what width I need to do the doors so First of all what you need to do is put your side up against your bottom and mark across with a pencil and then also do the same on the other side, it doesn't matter if the tracks are lined up at the moment, 
you're just getting a measurement. So you've got your bottom track with your line here and line here. So you want to measure the distance between this line here and then you want to measure your track depth. In my case it's 10 millimeters so you want to add 20 millimeters to the inside of these two lines and then you want to give yourself a couple of millimeters play so the door isn't really tight so I'm gonna go with four millimeters two millimeters either side so you want to add the inside of this line plus your two of your depths and then take away a couple of millimeters either side or five millimeters should be fine as long as it's still sitting in this track so I'm gonna do that now and then that will give me the width of the doors from bottom to top right so that is the depth of the drawers how you get them how you get the width of them is you should have your measurement for your Button already so I'm gonna book mine up and sit them on the outsides of the button like so so I know that this is 900 so it is 900 plus your in my case 10 millimeters either side so that's 920 so basically what you want to do then is half the 920 which is 460 and then you want a little bit of an overlap as these are overlapping doors in the center so I'm gonna overlap mine by 25 millimeters a piece so that's 920 half is 460 and then plus the 25 millimeters is 485 so I've got a depth of 260 and a width of 485 so I'm going to cut these out of 9 millimeter ply and then we will look at how we're going to go about handles might have to troll the internet, eBay, or I might just router or jigsaw a little slot in that you can get your fingers in, or we'll see. Just a quick one, guys. You want to make these tracks run as smooth as possible, so just got a piece of 9mm off cut ply with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around it. Just be careful when you put the this into the slot because you don't want to snap this bar in the middle but you can sit that in it sits in quite snug so and then you just want to give the inside of your tracks a good sand and this will make sure that your doors run nice and smooth when they are sitting inside of there so I'm going to get mine sanded now and then we'll move on to the next part So guys, this is right. So basically, how to get the height measurements for the buttons. Like I said, I'm gonna be putting my top joint up against the side button. So I wanted the I want to have the frame sitting flush with the bulk, the top of the bulkhead here. That's the idea. Like I've already mentioned, is these cupboards are going to act as a back of the kitchen cupboards that are going to be constructed in front of this so when you open the kitchen cupboards you'll have a sliding door which will slide over to that side and a sliding door that will slide over to that side so you can get in one side or you can get in the other the kitchen cupboards are going to be constructed with just one batten in the middle here at the back so basically halfway open that way halfway open that way so all I did was measured from the top of this ply here to the ceiling and that gives us my height and then the width I just measured as wide as I possibly could which is where these corners start turning here and then I measured 900 so what you're gonna have to do now is now that your frame is constructed is get a line where the top of the frame is going to be fixed to on the ceiling so you want a straight edge I've got a level here a straight edge is fine so straight edge pencil and then run your straight edge straight up from the wall mark your line on one side 
map, you're lying on the other side. And um, once you've done that, you just want to join the lines up. Right, this level's a little bit too rigid. What I'm going to do is, as you can see, I've got a gap there at the top. I'm going to use a batten that has got a bit of flex in it. And then once I've got my two sides set, I can push the middle up to the ceiling and then I can scribe that all the way along on the ceiling there. And that'll give us a guide to go off for the front of the frame. So the frame will sit behind that and then that'll be level and flush with this wall that's running down here. So let's get this line on and then get the doors cut and then we're getting somewhere. Yeah! Right folks, I thought I would just do a little bit on constructing this, so obviously you want to line your tracks up down here at the bottom and then I've just decided to put a little screw in there, so I've drilled through here with a 3mm drill bit, then taken this side bit away, deepened the drill bit there so you eliminate the possibility of this bit of wood splitting and then I've just countersunk this bit of wood here and then put a wood screw in that's probably about 40 millimeters in length so I'm gonna get this all put together put the other side on sit the doors in and then we'll see how it's working right peeps so that is the sliding door cupboard sorted got the little finger holes in here so obviously you slide that that way you can get in there and the same from the other side now i do realize these doors are loose so when you're driving about they could come open etc so at some point i will put some form of catch on here maybe i could fit a magnetic catch to the end of the doors and fit it inside of the end groove or you decide what you want to do but that's the way I've got to so far so this is going to be fit up above the passenger and driver seat and then yeah happy with that so for all of you wonderful folks following our channel or any newbies that was the slide and cupboard door video don't ask us what a three quarter eighth inch router bit is. Obviously that was meant to be a three eighth inch. Had to think about that one still. But that's irrelevant. Obviously mentioned there, it's a 10 millimeter router bit, nine millimeter ply. So just make sure you've got enough play there on your doors. I am actually gonna be painting these, so we'll see how that goes. And yeah, thanks for watching. Follow our next video. Follow our Instagram and social media pages. The van is nearly done, so it's getting to exciting times. I'm trying to make my way through the editing procedure at the moment. And hopefully we'll have more videos on the channel in the coming weeks. So thanks for watching as per. Hope everybody's in good health as usual. And look after yourselves.